Boxing Day football always brings the surprises and that was certainly the case yesterday in the championship. Welcome back to another video on the channel guys. Today we are going to be rounding up all of the action from the 10 championship matches that we had going on over the weekend. Of course we've got another two going on tonight and as that is the case we won't have our usual setup of having the midweek score predictions in the second half of the video. Instead I'll be doing a separate video on that coming out tomorrow so make sure to stick around on the channel for that. But we've got 10 games to talk through through today plenty of drama and action that unfolded let's jump into it all and starting out at Vicarage Road for really a game of men against boys Watford nil Millwall 2 we did mention coming into this one that a potential vulnerability and weakness from this Millwall side so far this season has been their record on the road and while there have been some notable performances you know that one against Preston for example more often than not they've just left a little bit to be desired um, away from home that certainly wasn't the case for this one though from minute one Millwall with a team who was up for this one and the momentum swing was obvious to see uh, from the offset for this one. Watford just didn't look up for it. Now, the two, I suppose, game-changing moments for Watford each came in the first half by the point uh, they were already 1-0 down, but the red card and Joao Pedro going off injured. That Joao Pedro injury, by the way, could be massively damning for Watford's season. As of recording, it's not all too clear the extent of the injury, but going off Bilic's post-match comments, it doesn't look promising, and that could be a real severe hammer blow for Watford's top six aspirations come the end of the season. Credit to Millwall though because they kept the foot on the gas for the second half. You know a few times this season with you know how Rowett tends to approach things. We've seen Millwall getting into those leading positions and just sort of sitting back and holding on to what they have. Wasn't the case in the second half. They went for the jugular and Zian Fleming with that clever free kick uh, makes it 2-0 for Millwall. He's now into double figures for the season. So, absolute bargain um, of a sign that they picked him up for in the summer transfer window. But great result there for Millwall on the road. Watford, plenty of troubling signs, I'd say, after that one. And it was some game going on at the Stadium of Light. Sunderland 2, Blackburn 1. A massive booster to Sunderland's top six hopes with all three points in this one. It was... Sunderland and Ross Stewart who actually gave Blackburn the early advantage in this one though with that quite bizarre own goal but Stewart more than made up for it just a few minutes later by converting that penalty. Now up until this point in the season Blackburn had actually been the best team in the championship for holding on to leads you know whenever they'd taken the lead in the match they had gone on to win it but the second half wasn't all too much in it but it did look like Sunderland who were that more likely side to go on and win this one and having both Stewart Stewart and Sims on the pitch once again. You know, obviously they both had their injury troubles before the international break. I think is an absolutely massive asset for this Sunderland side in the second half of the season, as well as having a fully fit Daniel Ballard who went ahead and assisted the winner. Such a cultured and tidy finish from Sims in the end, and it looked like the roof absolutely erupted in at the Stadium of Light. Massive crowd packed into there, and what a moment with that last minute winner. More real frustration there from Black. Burn, but for Sunderland, and we've been saying it for a little bit, definitely a dark horse contender for the top six, particularly with Stewart and Sims both fully fit and firing with Diallo in the form that he's in at this point in time as well and the rest of the spine of that squad. There's a lot to like about this team at the moment. You can see all the emotion with that last minute winner, just how much that momentum is building there at the moment. And speaking of momentum building, that's certainly the case at the Hawthorns for West Brom. Back on track with all three points away at Ashton Gate. They had that minor blip in midweek with that loss against Coventry, but back on track with all three points in this one. And Fair play to Carlos Corbran for how quickly he's going to head and really change the dynamics in there at West Brom. From a Bristol City perspective, though, this one was far too easy for the away side. The opening goal, for example, just completely cut through with one simple pass from the left-hand side. Phillips latches onto it and finishes well. And then the second goal, to be fair, is just an absolute moment of genius. Thomas Asante with two Bristol City defenders around him notices the keepers off his line and an absolutely audacious finish. Um, 
there to go ahead and wrap this one up. I will be at the Hawthorns in midweek watching West Brom up against my side, North End. So I'm very interested to see this West Brom side in the flesh and on the eye and see just how many um, improvements Corbrand's actually going to have made to this West Brom side. I'm, I'm really expecting a tough game in midweek. From a Bristol City perspective, though, really more turgid stuff with little going forward and some basic errors once again costing them um, at the back. Nigel Pearson has always been a little bit of a prickly character and I think we're seeing even more of that now coming out in post-match interviews in terms of some of the bitey comments he's coming out with which... Um, I don't think are necessarily helpful in his situation, but the facts are Bristol City are on an absolutely terrible run of form at this point in time. Since the beginning of October, so the last 14 championship game weeks, only Wigan Athletic have picked up fewer points than Bristol City have, which is incredibly worrying stuff. We mentioned a few videos ago on the transfer, on the uh, championship roundup, whether or not we consider this Bristol City side to be in a relegation battle, and right now, I think that's definitely applicable to this squad, which is majorly concerning. Next then to Hull up against Blackpool, these two playing out a one all draw. I did manage to get this prediction bang on, and a point which doesn't really do either side all all too many favours. Three points for either team in this one would have been a massive booster, particularly heading into the new year. But as things stand, Blackpool still in the bottom three hull, just about above that dotted line. Blackpool will probably sense this one as a bit of an opportunity missed, having taken the lead. Um, a goal of Hull's own undoing, really, but well pressed by Blackpool and a cracking finish from Carey from outside the box. Game changing moment comes in the second half when Thornley picks up that red card. From that point onwards, Hull can have that little bit more impetus about them in the final third and S2 Pinyan who's not really been hot on form recently I think prior to this game had been on an eight game goal drought but uh, fine finish in the end took that one really well with his head but neither side had that endeavour to go on from that point onwards and actually win this game. Blackpool the atmosphere continues to be sour seeing quite a bit of reaction from um, after the game actually with Appleton coming out with some quite interesting comments about not going over uh, to thank the Blackpool fans after the game and it just seems to be a massive disconnect at the moment between between um, management, some of the people higher up at the club and the fan base there as well. And um, yeah, the longer things don't fix themselves on the pitch for Blackpool, I think that sour feeling's only going to go on and magnify if I'm honest. After that, the Riverside 4, Middlesbrough 4, Wigan Athletic 1 and Borough fans I'm sure would have absolutely loved this one. Now I did catch a little bit of heat for omitting Tuberac from, from my mid season championship team of the season and rightly so from Borough fans I mean he has been absolutely excellent up until this point in the season and me admitting him from that side was certainly no knock on how good he's actually been so far this season but after that hat trick I think I'd have no option but to include him but a fantastic overall team performance Marcus Force with the opening goal and then Akpom with the hat trick considering the games he's played this season to the goal return he's come out with 14 championship starts and 3 cameo appearances from the bench. 12 goals and an assist in that time is absolutely prolific. The fact that Force is hitting the back of the net now a little bit more regularly as well. The rest of the side is looking like a real cohesive unit under Michael Carrick. And their next game is up against Blackburn Rovers, which I think is a really good opportunity actually for this Middlesbrough side. If they go ahead and win that one, they'd only be three points behind Blackburn, who are currently third in the table. So, yeah, really promising stuff from Middlesbrough. From a Wigan point of view, we have been a little bit more positive maybe on, you know, the Torre impact and things like that. Well, he's not got that first result so far. There have been elements of their play which we have liked I think this probably served as a little bit of a reminder that they are in a relegation dogfight this season and they will be up against it albeit I don't think any of us were really expecting Wigan to get anything from this game uh, given how Borough have been going under Michael Carrick but yeah Middlesbrough great stuff Tuber Akbom what a player and Huddersfield picked up a massive three points turning things around with a 2-1 win away at Deepdale this one just a real mess of a performance from North End from the approach to our game management, everything sort of went out of the window um, in the second half of North End for this one. Now, first half, Preston, we did find ourselves in that leading position, goal coming from the corner, Greg Cunningham um, in the end claiming it. But even at half time, the feeling around the ground was that wasn't a great performance and we were maybe a little bit fortunate to actually be ahead. Huddersfield themselves didn't look great, defensively solid 
enough but in the final third they were constantly lacking that final killer ball or that little bit of instinct and link up play and hadn't really threatened uh, Freddie Woodman in net for North End. Second half then rolls around and Huddersfield suddenly have a little bit more about them but Preston did have a 10 or so minute spell to go ahead and kill this game off where we did have a flurry of chances. That goal ultimately didn't come from North End and fair play for Huddersfield for spotting a little bit of a weakness in the North End back line and tweaking things with a couple of changes. Diara coming on for example and really influencing things in the second half. He assists Jordan Rhodes for the equaliser and then Rodoni links up with Hayden for the winner. Really poor I thought in the end from North End that uh, winning goal in the end from a defensive point of view. To allow the cross to come in from the right hand side to go across the entirety of the pitch to then catch out Fernandez at that far post is really poor from Preston but even up until that point the game was crying out for changes at maybe even half time because we were way off the pace for this one fair play to Huddersfield though for spotting those weaknesses and taking advantage they've not been especially prolific on the road this season they've not been especially prolific from open play this season but putting uh, both of those uh things to bed with all three points and two open play goals here I still think it will be stacked up against them for a survival bid come the end of the season going off some of the other sides that are down there at the moment but that was an absolutely massive stride in the right direction and for North End our troubles at Deepdale continue and if it wasn't for our stellar away record we might find ourselves in some trouble because things at Deepdale have just been really stale recently after that to Rotherham up against Stoke, not a great looking game in terms of overall quality but we were treated to four goals in this one. Rotherham twice taking the lead but Stoke fighting their way back into it on both occasions. Honestly it wasn't the greatest first half performance from Rotherham, it was Stoke who looked the more willing side to create something and take the lead but they just about snatched that lead going into half time thanks to a Tom Snow and goal. Stoke do get gifted back into this one really, a basic defensive blunder from Rotherham. Rotherham allows Campbell in to make it 1-1 before Washington uh, re-establishes Rotherham's lead. Once again, another bit of a defensive lapse as Lee Peltier uh, nods it into the back of his own net to make it 2-2 in the end. Once again, Stoke not being at their best, but they did look the more creative side in terms of having more of the ball, more shots, more chances. But I still think that performance leaves quite a bit to be desired, to be honest, considering the momentum and form of Rotherham going into this one and the general level of performance from Rotherham, which I didn't feel was great in this game either. From a Rotherham perspective, their next game in the Championship, I think, is absolutely huge. We've been talking about this slide off from them recently. Well, next up, it's up against bottom of the table Huddersfield who maybe have got a little bit more mojo about them after that three points at Deepdale so that one right there could be absolutely massive in terms of shaping up the relegation picture for both sides. Sheffield United continued on their winning run with all three points against Coventry 3-1 in this game sort of took Coventry 45 minutes to really get going in this one didn't show much for that first half it was a really well crafted goal actually for Sheffield United's equaliser um, Ilman and I with some nice moves and then that ball through to McAtee who finishes it really well Coventry do look a little bit more reinvigorated for that second half and the game defining moment perhaps come when Gukrez fails to deliver from the penalty spot had he converted that penalty I think there's every chance that Coventry go on to get at least a point from this game because their overall second half performance I think was much improved on their third First half showing. The game just gets away from them though in the next stages with Clark making it two for Sheffield United before Doyle puts the cherry on the cake making it three. Gurkarez does get one back eventually and that John Egan red card could have set up quite the dramatic end. You know we've seen late goals and comebacks from Coventry in the past but it was always going to be quite the mountain to climb. Sheffield United continue to look good. Another three points at home. Coventry I think have a decent opportunity at bouncing back in midweek with a game against Covent with a game against Cardiff sorry but this one uh, there was probably just too many inconsistencies and took them a little bit too long to get properly going. We then had Cardiff playing out a goal of straw with QPR and I think it was fairly obvious throughout this game where both sides are badly lacking and could seriously do with strengthening. That is in the final third. We weren't really treated to 
all too much goal mouth action in this one. There was actually only one registered shot on target throughout the entire 90 minutes from both sides in this one, which really speaks to the quality in the final third. In the, in the second half, in fact, neither team managed to register a proper shot on target. Once again, from Cardiff, the endeavour was there, but the quality just not quite backing that up. And I think for what both teams want to achieve this season, Cardiff, obviously, with that relegation trap door just beneath them, and QPR hoping to break into the top six. I think both are in need of that freshening up in the final third come January. But obviously Cardiff have quite a few complications with that, with their transfer embargo situation and their QPR as well with how their finances will be looking in January. So uh, yeah, difficult one really, not too much in it, not a lot of quality. And the pressure gets cranked up on Dean Smith once again with Norwich losing back-to-back -back matches. I did fancy Luton coming into this one and the much better side I have to say throughout the 90 minutes. The first half it was all Luton Town going forward. Norwich really struggled in to build up any sort of momentum and get out of their half. And Luton, had they been that little bit more clinical in the first half, could have easily been two goals up at half time. Eventually, they do get their breakthrough. Uh, well won back and finished off by Campbell to put Luton 1 0 up. But even when Norwich aren't playing at their best, they've still got match winners at this level. And it was one of the slightest sort of lapses in concentration by Luton at the back, allowed Timu Puki to run off his man, and then with a fine finish made it 1-1. From that point onwards, Norwich did start to build a little bit of momentum and did look like the side who were going to go on and win this game, particularly when that uh, red card comes out for Luton. And, you know, you'd imagine that Norwich then would be in the ascendancy, but Corley Woodrow on from the bench, and what a finish in the end. I have to say, I think a richly deserved three points, uh, Woodrow snapping this one up for Luton right at the death. Norwich trying to throw men forward for uh, the added on time for this one, but that equaliser wasn't to come. And I mean, you can t you can sense the sour mood in the in the Norwich fan base. Even when they equalised in this game and were starting to get back on top, you could still hear chants of Dean Smith, we still want you gone, coming from the away end. I think that sums up where that fan base is at at the moment. But for Luton, cracking win and a great start for Rob Edwards in at Kenilworth Road. But guys, there we have it. That will wrap it up for today's video. If you did go to a championship game over the festive period, do let me know about it in the comments down below. We do also have a couple games which are going on tonight. As those games haven't yet taken place, I won't be predicting the midweek predictions um, in the second half of today's video. Instead, I'll be doing a separate video on that, which will be coming out tomorrow so make sure to go ahead and stay tuned for that if you did go on to enjoy though guys make sure to leave like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content thanks for tuning in guys and i'll see you all in the next one